Ladies and gentlemen, I am the one and only DJ Stars. And I would like to welcome all of you to the final lightning flash update of 2017. You already know who I am, Mr. Controversy. And the operator of the best damn Twitter handle known to mankind. And this is the lightning flash update for December 29th. 2017, the final lightning flash update of 2017, as I had mentioned already. And before we get into what I got to talk about, before we get into the uh, weekly show reviews, and before we get into the um, news, rumors, and reports, I got a few things to say. Number one, tomorrow, on Saturday, December 30th, tune into the channel because I will be reviewing, in my opinion, the top. 10 matches of 2017. 2017 was a year of ups, it was a year of downs, and uh, in between we had some great matches. I'm going to review which matches, in my opinion, deserve to be in that list. Also, I'd like to th I would like to thank each and every single one of you for uh, supporting me, for uh, subscribing, for the likes, for the comments, for the um, likes and the retweets on Twitter, for everything that you have done to uh, make this channel enjoyable for me to make this little uh this little um profession that i do enjoyable for me i started in july and i'm ending the year on a high note uh on youtube and i'm hoping to uh grow even bigger in 2018 so i would like to send out a very special thank you to each and every one of you who have supported me and who have subscribed and have liked and have watched all my videos since i started in july now then Let's get into the weekly show reviews. Raw Christmas. I'm not sure if it's just me, but I, I've just been feeling that for the past month, Monday Night Raw has been mainly a show full of two to, th two to four highlights that have been actually worth watching, that are actually worth caring about. Other than that, there's nothing really. It's, a, it, it's just filler in between. And Raw Christmas was just another just another case of it. Show started off with John Cena. Elias then came out. CM Punk chants rained down on Elias. Shocker, shocker. They were in Chicago, so I was expecting that. Cena said not to make fun of Chicago in Elias' song. Elias attacked Cena anyway. Cena then defeated Elias. It was a decent match, but throughout the entire match, I just couldn't help but feel as though Cena looked bad. Cena looked a little out of place. And um, that's just because of the fact that time off is your worst enemy. Cena's been um, working on all these different types of movies, Ferdinand specifically, and then all of a sudden he comes back and eh, he puts on a decent match with Elias, but ultimately the match really, really didn't have that much flow. It kind of dragged midway through. And um, in the end, I knew Elias wasn't going to win, but um, hopefully, hopefully this means uh, big things for Elias. Elias has uh, entered himself into the 2018 Royal Rumble. So we're going to see how Elias uh, favors in the Royal Rumble next year. Kurt Angle had a segment backstage with Jason Jordan and Seth Rollins in which uh, he announced that Jason Jordan and Seth Rollins will compete against the bar for the tag team titles later in the night. Roman Reigns also showed up, and Roman Reigns was gifted a match with Samoa Joe, and it was going to be for the Intercontinental Championship. Hideo Itami then defeated D. Brian Kendrick. That match uh, did what it needed to do. I do have some news on D. Brian Kendrick, which WWE reported earlier this week. Absolution defeated Mickey James, Bailey, and Sasha Banks. It was a it was a good match, but ultimately, ultimately in the end. It's going to accomplish nothing. I, I, I guarantee you, I guarantee you that as soon as the Royal Rumble is over, as soon as the Royal Rumble is over, Absolution will be no more. All they did was put these uh, women's factions together to hype up the Women's Royal Rumble. It was I was okay with Absolution, but then they had to go do the Riot Squad on SmackDown Live. And since then, since then, it just all fell flat. They always do this every single time. Every single time, every, uh, single, every single time something new comes around, every single time something exciting happens, whether someone wins a championship or a, 
women's faction or some type of new faction debuts. Leave it to WWE to just let it fall flat. It's happened way too many times this year. It happened with Dean Ambrose's Intercontinental Championship reign after the Elimination Chamber. That fell flat. It happened with Jinder Mahal's WWE Championship reign. Early July, it fell flat. And now it happened with Absolution. Three weeks after Absolution and the Riot Squad debuted, they fell flat. And no one cares about them anymore. And as soon as the Royal Rumble's over, I can guarantee, I would bet my, my life on it, that they are going to disband. Kane defeated Slater. Why is Kane... I, 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 do I even need to complain about this? Do I even need to say anything about this? Toughen up Slater. This is how you're going to toughen up Slater? By feeding him to a 50-year-old Kane who's going to amount to nothing. Kane is only there at the Royal Rumble to take the pinfall. Because, you know, you know Vince McMahon... Roman Reigns is riding Vince McMahon's dick train all the way to WrestleMania 34 when he faces Lesnar. We all know it's going to happen. We all know no one wants to see it. And we all know that Kane is only there in that triple threat match to take the pinfall so that way Strowman won't look weak. Rather than just giving Balor to Lesnar and actually building up some credibility for, ba for Balor. But no, you're feeding him to Kurt Hawkins. And you're having him defeat Kurt Hawkins. Kurt Hawkins on a 100 and... 57 match losing streak. I don't even know. Probably one of the most entertaining things about the show was Bray Wyatt and the Matt Hardy segment, which lasted about two minutes. And I actually tweeted this. I don't care what WWE has done to Bray Wyatt. I really don't care what Bray Wyatt has been through. I don't care about what Bray Wyatt has done. I don't care about the um, horrendous booking that Bray Wyatt has been through. I still pop for the guy. I still pop for the guy. His character is that damn good, and he is that damn good of a wrestler that I still pop for the guy no matter what. And Chicago still popped for the guy, too. Doesn't matter that we're, that they were in Chicago. They still popped for the guy, and it's really helping that uh, he's in a feud with Woke and Matt Hardy. And Matt Hardy attacked, and then for the next minute, he just laughed. And that was probably the most entertaining thing about Monday Night Raw, as far as segments go. Matt Hardy, I could listen to Matt Hardy laugh for the entire, for four hours, rather than watch the Royal Rumble. With the way, with the way the Rumble's looking at, looking like right now, I'd rather listen to Matt Hardy laugh. Cedric Alexander, Mustafa Ali, and Akira Tozawa, they defeated Enzo, Davari, and Gulak. It was a miracle on 34th Street Fight. It was a fun match, not gonna lie, and it uh, did what it needed to do to hype up uh, Alexander versus Enzo next week on New Year's Day for the Cruiserweight Championship. Um, it was mainly the second hour, no, not the second hour, the second half, excuse me, of Raw that um, really made Raw decent to a certain extent. Samoa Joe and Roman Reigns uh, then went to a DQ. It was actually tur uh, tu uh, turning out to be a great match. And uh, it went into a DQ because Reigns got himself disqualified. And I realized what they were trying to do. I, I realized what they were trying to do, but... Do you, do you really have to have a championship match? Let alone... Like, 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 let alone this match. Which has been built up over a month. And you, you have this match end in a DQ. Championship matches should not end in a DQ, period. You could have had this match uh, end some other way other than a DQ. Because I realize they want to drag this all the way out to the Rumble, in which I believe that Samoa Joe will win the Intercontinental Championship. But still. Still. I really don't like DQ finishes in championship matches. I really think that uh, WWE really needs to cut back on that. Because they did that a lot. They did that a lot this year. Strowman then defeated the Mistraj, no one cares. Alexa Bliss then had a pointless segment. The best part about this segment was that Asuka interrupted. She announced that she was in the Rumble, and then she killed Alexa Bliss with a lethal roundhouse kick. Jason Jordan and Seth Rollins then defeated The Bar to win the Raw Tag Team titles. This was a very good match, and I actually was expecting this for multiple reasons. Number one, it gives Jason Jordan something important to do. Uh, number two, Seth Rollins is once again a champion. And three, Dean Ambrose now has a valid reason to come back and turn heel. 
When Dean Ambrose comes back, you can expect him to turn heel right out of the gate, and him and Seth Rollins are going to have a memorable feud. All in all, Raw, I would rate probably a 4.5 out of 10. Wasn't really that good, but it had its highlights. SmackDown Live! SmackDown Live was a great show. SmackDown Live was a great show. I actually wasn't expecting it to be that good, since Raw was kind of uh, on the uh, downside. But SmackDown Live, it actually, um, it actually um, turned out to be a great show. Each and every single superstar who was on SmackDown Live, they uh, put the work in. And they made the Chicago crowd um, give right back to them. Chicago, the Chicago crowd was into almost everything that was on the show. Brian kicked us off. He announced that Ziggler voluntarily rel uh, relinquished the United States Championship. And he announced that there will be a United States Championship tournament. Gable and Benjamin interrupt and stated that they want a shot at uh, the Usos. Rusev and English came out and... Do I even need to say that Rusev is over? Because Rusev, without a doubt, I think Rusev, without a doubt, has been probably the best thing on SmackDown Live right now. Rusev and Aiden English, without a doubt, the most entertaining duo on SmackDown Live as we speak. New Day then came out, and then Daniel Bryan made a uh, triple threat match between Benjamin and Gable, Rusev and English, and New Day. And then, just like that, Benjamin and Gable won a, an amazing match. This match was fantastic. Chad Gable, I am now thoroughly convinced that Chad Gable is either Brock Lesnar's long-lost brother or the Hulk in disguise. How is Chad Gable able to do half of the stuff that he does? This match had everything. Gable did a double suplex. He was doing moonsaults. Xavier, uh, Xavier Woods was doing somersault planches. We had a double accolade on Xavier Woods and Chad Gable, and the right team won. Sean Benjamin and Chad Gable won, and I say this because you heard it here first. The next three SmackDown Live Tag Team Champions are Benjamin and Gable, Rusev and Aiden English, the Bludgeon Brothers. Benjamin and Gable have really come into their own as heels. Rusev and Aiden English are over. They are going to be the next top-tier babyface tag team on SmackDown Live. You have Benjamin and Gable defeat the Usos next week. You have them hold the titles to WrestleMania, in which then, then, and only then, can Rusev and Aiden English win the titles. Then you can have Rusev and Aiden English hold the titles uh, probably till July or maybe even SummerSlam, in which the Bludgeon Brothers will take the titles off of Rusev and Aiden English because the Bludgeon Brothers are the next top tier heel monster tag team on SmackDown Live. If they if they do not go that route in that order through for the first eight months of 2018, then they're missing out. They missed the boat. The Usos versus Benjamin and Gable for the tag titles will take place next week. Shane and Daniel Bryan had a confrontation. That tension is still continuing to build. Interesting to see where it goes next week. The Bludgeon Brothers defeated Brizongo via DQ as the Ascension saved Brizongo. A rematch with the Bludgeon Brothers was accepted on the Ascension's behalf for next week. Bludgeon Brothers and Brizongo. Ruby Riot defeated Naomi in a quick match and then the SmackDown Live Women's Division. Uh, they all teamed together to take the Riot Squad out. No one really cared about that. Bobby Roode defeated Baron Corbin in a good match. Uh, Baron Corbin, he has really come into his own. Baron Corbin has really improved. There was a point in time where Roode was going for the glorious DDT, and Baron Corbin held on to Roode's arm, um, did a like um, like a twist out of it, and then pulled Bobby Roode into a beautiful deep six that looked incredibly smooth. And Bobby Roode won with a roll-up. You can expect Baron Corbin to be um, watching this United States tournament very, very closely because Baron Corbin, he still has a rematch. And I believe that as soon as this tournament is over, Baron Corbin is going to go for whoever the United States champion is. We had Jinder Mahal then defeat Ty Dillinger in another good match. So two good matches uh, in a row. Both of these matches were part of the United States Championship Tournament. Interesting to see where they go 
with the other two first round matches next week. Probably they're going to put Sin Cara in there, maybe throw in Mojo Rawley and Zack Ryder. Um, but uh, apart from um, apart from that, we don't know who's going to be in the tournament. But uh, so far, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. Interesting to see where they go. Orton and Nakamura announced that they were in the Rumble. And then Kevin Owens defeated AJ Styles in a great match. When Sami Zayn tried to get involved, Shane McMahon came out, tried to eject Sami from ringside. AJ Styles uh, was distracted. Kevin Owens took advantage of the distraction. So now you can count on Owens to be facing AJ Styles at the Royal Rumble for the WWE Championship in Philadelphia nonetheless. Interesting to see how that plays out. Then we had 205 Live. It was better than last week. It was uh, better than last week. It was a decent show. Uh, it did what it needed to do. Cedric and Drew Gulak had a little segment backstage where Cedric kind of convinced Drew Gulak. He was trying to convince Gulak that when Enzo loses the Cruiserweight title, it's going to be a better 205 Live for everyone. When Drew Gulak turns face and he turns on Enzo, Drew Gulak is going to have a very, very, very successful babyface run. Mark my words on that. Hideo with Tommy defeated Jack Gallagher. Eh, that match did what it needed to do. Tony Nese then defeated Akira Tozawa in a decent match. Tony Nese. I'm uh, glad that they're starting to push Tony Nese as a singles competitor now. Supposedly, he's... I'm, guess, I'm guessing you could say he's off the Zoe train for now. But we're going to have to see where that leads. And then we had the hometown boy, Mustafa Ali. The AJ Styles of 205 Live. And Cedric Alexander defeating... Arya Davari and Drew Gulak in a good match. Ali and Alexander are always fun to watch. And that was pretty much that for 205 Live. This is all building towards the Cruiserweight Championship match between Cedric Alexander and Enzo next week. Then we had NXT. The Street Profits defeated some jobbers. Uh, then they called out the other tag teams and stated that 2018, they will conquer. They will conquer the Altars of Pain, Sanity, and then the Undisputed Era. They're going to be coming for the tag team titles. Ember Moon then defeated Sonya Deville in a decent NXT Women's Championship match. This basically did what it needed to do, and it um it uh, gave Ember Moon a successful title defense. And uh, then we had Kyrie Sane come out. Kyrie Sane. Then was doing her little uh, telescope thing. And then, out of nowhere, Shayna Baszler came out and choked out Kyrie Sane. So, could we be looking at a triple threat match for the NXT Women's Championship and NXT TakeOver Philly? Maybe. Maybe. You never know. If so, I'm very excited to see how this plays out. And I'm very much looking forward to see if it's going to be Sane, Baszler, or both that's going to be facing Ember Moon. That that definitely could be a great match. Um, then we had Sanity and the Undisputed Era announced in a rematch for the NXT Tag Team titles in two weeks. And then, wow, the fatal four-way between Johnny Gargano, Aleister Black, Killian Dane, and Lars Sullivan. Do I even need to say anything about this match? All four men look like legit badasses. I don't care what anyone says about this match. I don't care if they say that Alistair should have won. This match was fantastic in every sense of the word. And each and every single person looked fantastic in the process. Johnny Gargano won because of the Undisputed Era. And I guarantee you right now that it's going to be Aleister Black versus Adam Cole at NXT TakeOver Philly. And I was originally thinking that they were not going to give Johnny the NXT title yet. But after tonight, I am fully convinced. By all means, give Gargano the NXT Championship at TakeOver Philly. Now onto the news, rumors, and reports. So, numerous reports are currently saying that New York and Philadelphia are being considered as top contenders for WrestleMania 35. Very interesting. Very, very interesting to see how that plays out. I am very much looking forward to either 
because that means that I will have the opportunity to go to WrestleMania. I haven't been to WrestleMania ever since 2013. That was the only WrestleMania I've ever been to when it came to MetLife. It was very good WrestleMania when I saw it there live. And I hope for another great WrestleMania in the future, possibly WrestleMania 35. I would much I would I I, I wouldn't mind either. Do New York or Philadelphia. I don't care. I will be there. I will be there and I'm going to have a great damn time. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the news, rumors, and reports section, Mr. Slice Wrestling. After so long, the Slice Wrestling shoutouts are back. And Slice, I hope you are watching this. I got some reports from at Slice Wrestling. Mr. at Slice Wrestling, that's how you follow him. Go on Twitter, follow him at Slice Wrestling. And I quote, he tweeted a couple tweets. Number one, and I quote, WWE is considering Asuka, Nia Jax, or Ronda Rousey to win the first ever Women's Royal Rumble match. I would agree with maybe two out of the three of those women. Either Asuka or Nia Jax. Ronda Rousey's good, but I don't know if I would give her a big win like that immediately right out of the gate. I am very much looking forward to see what Ronda Rousey can do in WWE, but I don't think I would give her a win like that right out of the gate. I believe I would give it to Asuka. Set up for Asuka, possibly versus Alexa Bliss. You never know. Also, he also reported, Mr. Slice Wrestling reported that WWE is currently setting up for Johnny Gargano versus Tommaso, Ch Tommaso Ciampa at NXT TakeOver. New Orleans. Ladies and gentlemen, if this is true, and Johnny Gargano wins the NXT Championship, prepare yourself for the match of the year in 2018. Next, WWE also announced earlier this week that Brian Kendrick actually suffered a fractured orbital bone and fractured nasal bridge during his match with Hideo with Tommy. And, uh, of course, you know that this was suffered due to the go-to-sleep. Brian Kendrick obviously didn't take it right, or Tommy actually drove his knee too far up, and it caused a serious injury to the Brian Kendrick, although WWE does not know how long the Brian Kendrick will be out. Next, unfortunately, I uh, have another injury report, and it appears that Paige has gotten injured at a house show in Uniondale, New York City. The six women tag team match that she was a part of was called off and she received medical attention immediately after. She was able to walk out under her own power and uh, as of right now, there are no reports as to how serious this injury really is. I am hoping that this injury is not serious because I do want Paige to be in that Royal Rumble. And who knows, maybe Paige could possibly be facing Bliss at the Royal Rumble for the Women's Championship to serve as a bridge. So um, if uh, Paige is really injured, then I wish her a speedy recovery. I really hope it's not that serious because I do want to see her compete in the Women's Royal Rumble. And my final report of the day actually comes from the Nationwide Arena. Interesting and questionable at the same time is this report. So the Nationwide Arena apparently spoiled the main event of Fastlane. Fastlane, we all know, is the SmackDown Live exclusive pay-per-view, which is taking place in Columbus, Ohio, I believe, on March 11th next year. And the main event reads as follows... AJ Styles will be defending the WWE Championship in a fatal five-way match against Kevin Owens, Randy Orton, Sami Zayn, and Shinsuke Nakamura. Now, before I say what I'm going to have to say, in no way, shape, or form am I going to say that this match is not going to be a good match. Matter of fact, some of some of the, the best matches of, the, of uh, 2017 were Fatal 5-Way matches. It happened at Extreme Rules on uh, the Fatal 5-Way match between Rollins, Reigns, Wyatt, Balor, and Joe 
Uh, the women's Money in the Bank ladder match between Becky Lynch, Charlotte, Tamina, Natalia, and um, and Carmella. That was a fatal five-way match. That was a great match. And earlier this year at No Mercy, the fatal five-way women's championship match between Alexa Bliss, Nia Jax, Bayley, Emma, and Sasha Banks. That was a great match. So in no way, shape, or form am I saying that this match is going to be terrible. Especially when you have five of the best in-ring talents on SmackDown Live together in one match. It is bound to be a fantastic match. But at the end of the day, how much logic does this match have? How much sense does this match have? How much build does this match have? What are the plans for this match? What are the plans for the people in this match? I mean, obviously, if this is true, then AJ Styles will still be WWE Champion, which is good. But at the same point in time, who's gonna, going to win the Royal Rumble? Nakamura is the most logical choice to win the Royal Rumble. As far as we know now, as far as we know now, WWE is setting up for AJ Styles and Kevin Owens at the Royal Rumble, which I am okay with. But then who's going to win the Royal Rumble? Randy Orton's in the Rumble. Nakamura's in the Rumble. Most likely Zayn will be in the Rumble. But if all five of these competitors are competing in this match, AJ Styles, we all know, is going to compete in the match because he's WWE Champion. But if Randy Orton, Sami Zayn, and Shinsuke Nakamura are competing in this match, three men who will most likely be in the Royal Rumble, and Kevin Owens, the man who will most likely be challenging Styles at the Rumble, if they all compete in this match, you're telling me that none of those men are going to win the Royal Rumble? Who are you going to have win the Royal Rumble then? You're going to have... Well, obviously we know that Roman Reigns is going to win the Elimination Chamber because that's a Raw brand exclusive pay-per-view, which I am okay with, as, li as long as it's not the Royal Rumble. But then it opens the door for a SmackDown Live superstar. And Shinsuke Nakamura. Shinsuke Nakamura is without a doubt the best choice to win the Royal Rumble. What are you going to throw that away for? You're going to throw it away for a match with Randy Orton? You're going to throw that away for a match with John Cena? You're really going to have John Cena win the Royal Rumble? Now, I don't know if that's the recent report, but as far as I know now, if Nakamura's in this Fatal 5-way, that's what it's looking like. You're going to have AJ Styles versus John Cena Part 4. Now, granted, it's going to be a great match because AJ Styles versus John Cena was my favorite rivalry of 2016. It was a great damn rivalry. But you're really going to throw a match between two of the best wrestlers in the world, AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura, a match that stole the show at Wrestle Kingdom in 2016, a match that many people want to see, a match that many people deemed that it could very well be match of the year, a match that many people deemed should be the main event of WrestleMania, not Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar. You're going to throw that away to put Nakamura in a fatal five-way match with Styles, Owen, Zayn, and Orton? That is, without a doubt, a horrible decision if this match is to go through. Booking-wise, wrestling-wise, it's going to be a great damn match. Booking-wise, no. Booking-wise, it is a horrible, horrible decision. And I hope, I really do hope, that plans change. Because Vince McMahon cannot pass up on this opportunity to put Nakamura and Styles at WrestleMania for the WWE Championship. If he passes this opportunity, if he passes this opportunity, then WrestleMania will be a failure. WrestleMania will suck, just like it did in 2016. And ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up this edition of the Lightning Flash Update. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for tuning into this video. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at the DJ Storms. Yes, I changed my Twitter and Instagram name. Do not forget to tune into my top 10 matches of 2017 tomorrow, December 30th, right here on the channel. Do not forget to tune in next week for the very first Lightning Flash Update of 2018. 2018. Do not forget to tune in to 
my rundown for the Royal Rumble going up on January 27th, 2018. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm the one and only DJ Storms. Thank you for joining me here on YouTube.com. You have a great weekend, and I'll see you tomorrow.